Story RH, the podcast that makes a long story short. Welcome to all. History is made of stories. In this episode, we'll be talking about the first rule of getting along and living together, respect for others. Okay, so we've heard it all before. Don't forget to say hello, please and thank you. Don't send out urgent emails at 11 p.m. or on the weekend. Drop the snide comments and sexism. But when you look at the way some people behave, it's clear there's still a long way to go. So, when it comes to getting along and learning respect, what's the story? Let's start by reiterating. Respect for others is one of the ground rules for getting along in a social setting. And getting along isn't just crucial in society. It's also vital in the corporate environment. If people can't get along together, then they can't be expected to really work together. Now all that might seem obvious, but there are always those who seem to see themselves as an exception to the rule. When you look at the way some people act, from the fawning feudalism of small-minded managers, to the detachment of big bosses who sit on their pedestal and seem incapable of even greeting an intern, or uttering a thank you, the outlook can seem depressing. Depressing and at times outrageous, all of which gives human resources departments plenty of food for thought. Starting with deciding where to draw the line between the needs of the individual and the concerns of the collective. To what extent should one person's rule apply to everyone? At what point should the wishes of a group be imposed on the collective as a whole? This merits a little thought about governance, about the need for common rules that apply to everyone and how they should be chosen, not to mention any guidelines on leeway and penalties. Everyone should also understand that respect for others is non-negotiable. That's the second point of focus. The company isn't a surrogate for a basic education, which some may be lacking. It might not be the company's job to educate the people it employs, but it must ensure respect for others is non-negotiable within the firm. That naturally brings us to the issue of penalties and how to convey the corporate culture and to do that effectively. Middle management needs to be the conduit. You can't just put out a patronizing list of dos and don'ts. And managers need to lead by example. That's the third point. HR departments must be adamant on the issue of exemplarity, irrespective of where people sit in the company hierarchy. Still, this particular issue often requires a good deal of groundwork to offset that feeling of entitlement some people feel once they reach a certain pay grade. The unacceptable behavior of higher-ups all too often goes unchecked. The last point of focus is an equally touchy subject, how to raise awareness, especially when you're dealing with people who are oblivious to the damage they do. Tackling these issues starts with being honest to yourself and questioning your own behavior. It also means ensuring that any inappropriate situations, which are often already widely known, are not allowed to continue under cover of convention, idleness, or fear of reprisals. To recap, respecting others is a vital stepping stone towards getting along as a collective. And if that sort of mindset doesn't come naturally to some people, it's up to HR departments to help by focusing on four key areas. One, where to draw the line between individual and collective interests. Two, how to make it clear that respect is non-negotiable in the company. Three, how to be uncompromising in ensuring everyone meets the same high standard. Four, how to foster awareness all round. Is that right? Exactly right. Way to make a long story short. Story RH, the podcast that makes a long story short.